If you follow these three simple rules, your camp knife will instantly work better for you. And I have here in my hands two knives that follow those three rules almost flawlessly in the new Reef F5 and S5 glider. And I'm gonna share with you what those three rules are while putting these two knives through a gauntlet of different tasks and chores to see not only how they perform, but also comparing the new five inch to the original F4 layout while also running in some competitive options. And a little bit later, I'm gonna share with you how one lucky subscriber is gonna have a chance to win one of these knives. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me today. It's gonna to be a blast. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Rule number one that will make any camp knife instantly work better for you is having the right grind to accomplish the particular tasks that you're wanting to achieve with your fixed blade. And I would make the argument a good grind is more important than the quality of steel that is actually chosen for the knife. You can have the most premium super steel, but if it's a grind that is not going to work well in the particular environment or scenarios you're wanting to put it through, or if the edge geometry is just not good, it doesn't matter how super that steel is, it will not perform the way you want and you'll be disappointed with the results. And through the years, what I've found I use the most are fixed blades that are around five inches in blade length with either a high saber grind like on the F5 or a well-executed Scandi grind like on the S5 glider. Now, where would each grind be best suited and where may it lag in certain tasks starting with this Scandi? Well, the glider has a true Scandi zero degree edge. There's no secondary bevel, meaning that with the 0.16 inch thick stock, it is designed for precision like most Scandi grinds. Excellent for woods crafting. So if you're a woods crafter, bush crafter, and you like making notches, this thing just bites in. It's going to demolish the wood without much effort, without much energy. It doesn't fatigue and wear out your hand and the muscles in your forearms like other grinds will when you are working and manipulating wood. And that is where I saw this thing just super excel, which you would expect. And also, you know, uh, thinner, like cordage, rope, those type of things, it will also just slice and eat right through those type of materials. Now, because it has a zero degree edge, even though it is made out of CPM 3V steel, which is an excellent, excellent tough steel, it's crowd treated Rockwell 59 to 61, which is great for that Rockwell. This is not ideal for hard uh, use, you know, difficult, material pounding through tons and tons of wood, lots of hacking and chopping. This is not an ideal edge geometry or grind to do that with. Even though 3V is excellent, and even though I did chop with it and I found very minimal uh, issues and rolling even through that pine, but it still is not going to perform as well on those harder tasks. Now on the flip side, the high saber grind that's on the F5 is like the sport utility grind of the knife community. It doesn't necessarily excel and it's not gonna blow your mind at any particular one task, but it's able to accomplish a plethora of tasks well. It's much more durable and tough than a Scandi grind and is able to accomplish food prep better. It's able to be more durable, particularly because in this model, it's gonna be 0 0.18 on the stock thickness versus the 16 on that Scandi. So there's more durability there. It's gonna be better for hacking, chopping, splitting wood, but also can get a lot of carving done without a lot of effort. You will feel having to put more energy and pressure into your cuts, particularly if you're doing like a notch or you're really having to go through like a knotted piece of wood and clear that out because you're making a spear point or something like that. It will take more energy to get through, but it is going to excel in a lot of those harder tasks and will be able to do better around like a, a camp kitchen than say a Scandi grind. That's what I prefer. And this particular blade still rocking CPM 3V at that same Rockwell, crowd treated, everything like that. And what's really interesting is that this, it, uh, uh, it's stated on the site, it says a slightly hollowed saber grind. And I put my ruler up against that. I didn't see any light in there. Uh, speaking with the designer, Stu, he said there is just the, the ever so slight up near the shoulder of a concaving to accelerate the cut even more than what you would normally get on your standard grinds. Now, I can't visually, when I put my ruler up against it, see a difference between this and any other saber grind I own, but that is just something to be aware of. So the velocity in which you're gonna carve with this is still very good for being a 3 16 inch, five inch 
blade because of how high the grind is and how it's been ground in. And guys, I do wanna invite you to hit that like button and to consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you can be notified every week when I put up new videos just like this. And the second rule that will instantly make any camp knife work better for you is having a simple, ergonomic, large handle. Now the handle offers a level of detail that's so hard to find in the knife industry. Let me explain. When you look at the original F4, it has one of the best handles on a four inch blade I've ever encountered because it's five inches long, so it will fill out my hand very nicely and 0.95 thick. So, I mean, it fills out the hand. It doesn't float, it's not narrow. It is excellent. Well, the F5 and S5 take that to the next level, keeping the five inches of length, but they've actually made the handle even girthier at 1.18 high and 0.99, basically an inch thick on the maximum thickness with slight tapering near the front and then a little bit near the back. What that means is for my large size hands, this fills it out so well. I have few fixed blades in the collection. I maybe have one or two that I can't really think of off the top of my head that will fill out and give me as a comfortable a feel and grip as the five series does. And what that helps to achieve is with a little bit of tapering on the back and a flare, if you back off, you get excellent grip for wrist flick and it really stays in your hand, even though it doesn't have a bird beak per se. But then if you choke up, it really fills it out, having a gradual guard with no jimping. So it's not needed on a knife like this at all. And that gradual guard is fully encapsulated by the handle scale, meaning that you have not only good impact resistance if you are gonna stab with this, now this is not a tactical knife, but for hiking, camping, backpacking, adventures, uh, whatever it may be, outdoor use and utility, absolutely. Uh, and that uh, handle scale means that there's no hot spots when you choke up and you start doing carving and whittling. I've had several knives that are very ergonomic, but the guard is exposed. So it's just exposed metal and it creates a hot spot, particularly if it's not machined. So this just fills it out so nicely. Now, you may remember that the stock thickness on the Scandi is narrower at 0 0.16 versus the 0 0.18. So most companies would just make the exact same thick handle scales and slap them on both blades, meaning that the Scandi would actually have a narrower handle. Not the case. They've actually made these handle scales for the Scandi thicker to match perfectly the dimensions of its thicker brother, the Saber Grind. That is genius. And rule number three that will make any camp knife work better for you is having a well-designed sheath with the materials that you prefer that will easily transport your tool, not only around camp, but back and forth on the trail and is oriented in a way that will accentuate that type of use. And there are some big updates to the sheath options. So first and foremost is that you can now get this Kydex sheath for both the Scandi grind as well as the Saber grind. And we'll come back to kind of unpacking all the details in a moment but we got to talk about this new leather sheath layout that will also be available for both your Scandi grinds as well as your Sabre grinds. This is made by Badger Claw Outfitters here in the USA. I love the color. It wears really quick. You can see like just scratching it. I mean, it's going to have this beautiful uh, patina kind of wear to it as soon as you start using it. Good little drainage hole, dense leather all the way through, double stitched. Good two rivets there, large belt loop and good friction as well. And obviously you can wet form it if you wish. And for 10% of the population that is South Pod, all you lefties, if you go over to the Reef website, they will have left-handed carry options in both the leather as well as the Kydex. And as a final data point, the leather sheath can handle both the Scandi grind as well as the Sabre grind. So this will fit either blade style for you, but that is not the case with the Kydex. If you get a Kydex sheath for the Sabre grind, the Scandi grind will not go in there because of the different you know, edge geometry. So the Kydex is form fitted for whichever grind you choose, the leather is ambidextrous for whatever grind you choose. Now, for a very important part of any video where we talk pricing, value, and competitive options, and for all you guys, how to get entered in to win one of these blades, and I'll touch on that momentarily. But Let's go ahead and see what the pricing is first on these new designs. And it does not matter if you want Scandi, if you want Saber, if you want Micarta, you want G10, you want Kydex, you want leather, they're all, whatever the variant and whatever your style, are gonna be 
in $60. Now I will have links in the description box below this video over to not only the Reef website, but also all the affiliate networks that I regularly partner with. So if you feel like it's time to pull the trigger and these are connecting with you, then I will have all those provided below. This model drops on April 19th at 12 p.m. Eastern time, 2024. So you're actually guys are getting kind of like a preview so you can make a good choice and whether or not you should jump on over because uh, I'm sure these are gonna sell out pretty quick. Now, at that price point, I know many of us are going, ooh, that's pricey. I can get a budget-friendly boomstick for that much. Yes, and with this blade, you're getting a lifetime, no questions asked, transferable warranty. And even if it's stolen from you and you show them a police report, they'll send you out a new one while giving us American made build quality with superb fit and finish as I'm about to show you in just a moment. I have a knife that's about the same cost that does not have near the fit and finish as these do while giving us plenty of choices to fulfill our particular tastes in knives and these designs don't break the three rules we're talking about today. Now, what about those competitive options and the Reef 4 series? And before I get into that, I do wanna let you guys know how you can get entered into win. It's super straightforward. We've been doing this for a while now, works out great. There is a link in the description below this video titled Reef Knife Giveaway. That link takes you over to Google Forms and just fill out the simple questionnaire, make sure to agree to the terms of the giveaway, and then you will get an email confirmation letting you know that you've been entered in a win. And I'll be giving away the F5 with a Kydex sheath. Now, when we look at the original F4 that started it all, being about an inch shorter and a little bit thinner at 5.30 seconds versus that 3 16 if you were to ask me between the two, I always felt like this was great companion blade, but I never really carried it stand alone. It was only if I was having either a hatchet or a chopper with me. This blade I can carry with me as a standalone tool. And because of it's a little bit extra size, I don't even feel like I need that larger tool, maybe a hatchet, but I can get most of the projects done with this design. So between the two variants, now you can get this 3V or MagnaCut, the F4, this is almost more of like an EDC size for me or to run in tandem with a larger blade. This is a standalone and this will see a lot more use than the F4 because of its size. But on the flip side, I'm a little torn between the Scandi versions of the S5 and S4 because it's cool to have a five inch option, gives you a lot longer blade to cut with, span if you need to split stuff, do whatever, and you don't see a lot of five inch Scandies but I see the value of having a shorter blade to manipulate and do the really precision cuts and get really close up and have the leverage that you need for those really precise, precision workings. So I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm gonna have to use these more to determine which one I'll probably like gravitate to using. And I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Do you see value in having a five inch Scandi or does four inch make more sense? Now, what about some non-reef knives? And this is a cautionary tale. Even though this is made in Germany out of 3V steel, the Burker Bronco I had a lot of issues with. The handle was not to my liking, too thin, too narrow, too short. Um, the edge geometry was not in a way that worked well for me and the durability was definitely questionable compared to the tip testing that I did on that. Uh, and the leather sheath though, very good. And I mean, the, the value is definitely there like between 150 and 200. Uh, the performance is not. So, I mean, that's me, that's my mileage on that, the, on that Bronco, but that's just one example. Another one on the flip side that is, you know, for some people, absolutely what they gravitate to. Here is a Bark River. Uh, this is the Bravo uh, LT 1.25, previously reviewed. Convex edge, I love convex, but I use Sabre a lot more. And for some, they just don't prefer grind, you know, at sharpening and doing all that. Lots of different blade steels to choose from. This is crew wear. You can get all types of different handle materials. Now I prefer, so it's gonna come down a lot to preference, clothy micarta, and that's what the uh, reef has, over slick micarta that the, bra that the Bark River has. I prefer the utilitarianism of bolts. Uh, some people love pins and I love that on certain knives, I like pins, but if you were to ask me if I had to choose, I'd probably go with the utilitarianism of a bolt, but that not, might not be for everybody. 
Uh, and then we did see, you know, some definitely like little fit and, fish, fit and finish issues where the scale came way down and not, you know, there wasn't perfectly symmetrical. And then I was very lackluster on the leather sheath. I way prefer the leather sheath that comes with the reefs. And these will go anywhere between $300 and $500, depending on steel and handle material variants. So that's, you know, just a concept, food for thought. Well, guys, there you have it. I hope that this video has not just been fun and entertaining, but giving you really good food for thought to consider for yourself if these two models, which one would make more sense, maybe the smaller version, larger version, or something else altogether. That's what I hope to do in every single video that I create, giving you guys entertainment, but also valuable understanding on what tools can and cannot do. So I cannot wait to hear what your guys' thoughts are, because for me, these are definitely apex predator level belt knives and phenomenal options if you use your tools quite a bit and you see value in checking the box on all three of the rules that we have discussed today. As always, appreciate you guys so much. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember to stay equipped, stay prepared. I'll see you out there.